data flow diagrams are widely used in the IT profession. Define the term data flow diagram. It is a that the power data is collected, distributed, collected, processed, stored, and distributed within a system. Collected, processed, stored, and distributed within a system. List three elements used in a DFD. We have a external entity, data store, um, data flows, and processes. Describe a level one DFD. A, a level one DFD. Is a depiction of a system that uses multiple processes and data stores to show how the data is um, dealt with inside the system. I know what else they wanted to describe a data flow diagram, a level one data flow diagram. Usually, this would be like what's the difference between a context level and a, a level one diagram. And you would basically say a context level does not have multiple processes and doesn't have any data stores. But it's gonna just describe a level one DFT. So that sounds context. Yes, yeah, context. context level. Yeah. But there is a problem with with um with TXC and this context level diagram because they they include data stores in context diagrams in the questions that they give us. But when you actually check the like the definition for a context diagram, a context diagram is not supposed to have any data stores. So um this confusion has been going on for years because they keep asking questions like this where they want you to differentiate that there are multiple processes and data stores but then when they give you a context diagram they're giving you a data store in it too so just whenever you have data store whenever you have a question you have to draw with data stores just put the data stores in because obviously they're looking for that for the marks but if you have to describe it you have to see clearly that the contact level is not supposed to have data stores because what you could do boy what you could do we gotta do the people exam and they make it in line all right so our customer can order so let's go start a highlight customer is the external entity order sports from a gear sports shop the sports shop will deliver the gear and an invoice the sports shop can also order gear from its supplier so we have a supplier that's our next external entity is out of stock the supplier will send a delivery note after shipping the gear cool. so that is we have the external entity let's see what the um see what the this is the beta sports shop will deliver the gear and an invoice so gear and invoice that has two pieces of um, basically data. Workshop can order gear from its supplier. So they order gear from the supplier if it's out of stock. When the products the supplier will send a delivery note after shipping the gear. So the supplier sends a delivery note after shipping the gear to the company. Alright, so basically we have external entities. We have data that is passing and then the process. Well, the process is just the order. Process and order. Alright, so that's that. So we hit them. Customer. Customer is uh, external entity. Customer orders gear. So order. And I will go to a, um, a process called um, process order. All right, so when you process the order, it's possible deliver the gear and an invoice. So we send back the gear and invoice as the data that's going back. The shop can also order gear from its supplier. So now we have a new external entity called supplier. And we order the gear from the supplier, which order. No, out of stock order. Um, no order. Store. So if you have gear ID, um, yeah, you can put gear ID too. Well, you, you can't you can't assume that the the gear that they order from the supplier is the one that the customer wants. Also, they just say this the shop can also order gear from the supplier if it's out of stock. So it wouldn't be the exact thing that the customer ordered. It, this would be just a restock. So, um, they wouldn't they wouldn't um they are. Uh, they wouldn't take away a marker because yeah, the fact is they order in something whether they order it for the customer or not doesn't matter they order in so um they will send a delivery note delivery notes back right so delivery note will go back and yeah that's that's that, that's basically that yeah how much marks are given it for this let me see eight marks boy what but if you put it in because you get so accustomed doing it i can't see them being alive so eight marks again for this boy one two three four five six seven where the eight marks coming from boy anyhow say thanks and move on take your eight marks and smile oh no sir i had um i had i had a, a data store in oh. to see if the gear is an auto order on. well <laughs> you ain't gonna know that you know, that they check it um, but it's the oh, 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 oh. um oh because you kind of you kind of think this out of stock thing well, normally they explicitly say that they would check their stock to see if they have it in stock based on the previous questions that they would ask like this they would say um they would check the stock database and see but they don't have any word named stock database so you gotta put it in here and compound with the fact that context level is supposed to have any data store it should be okay yeah all right, all right. Um, 
information plays a critical role in all organizations. There's three criteria for accepting a piece of information. Well, it must be current, accurate, reliable, yeah. currency, accuracy, reliability, and the many others that are out there. You just choose one and run with it. Really. Nothing much could happen to you. An IT manager was informed that there was a virus affecting an organization's computing system, suggesting so three important pieces of information required and the role that each piece of information plays in informing the IT manager's decision making. Six marks, boy. Mm, two marks for each. Three important pieces of information required. So there's a virus affecting an organization's computing system. What do I want to say? I want to get the name of the virus. One name of the virus. Um, we want to get um, the part of the system it's affecting. And um, three, um, three pieces of information required and the role that each piece of information plays in informing IT manager decision making. How to stop it. Alright, so name of the virus. Knowing the name would help them in doing proper research um, about the virus and the issue and all. Two, the parts being aff the system being affected, the specific um, parts of the system would help the manager know which which parts to isolate when fixing it. And how to stop it, um, the step needed in stopping it would guide how much inconvenient the, the of the system would have to go through anything else. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, three important pieces are the type of virus this is helping you know, and how much damage the virus has already done. Oh yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one. Because the original virus, yeah, those are, this has, you know, this really don't have a, a, a exact answer. Exactly. Put yourself in the shoes of the manager, so yeah, we should be good there. Most, most, of, most of the answers are that good there. Yeah. Alright, problem definition and problem analysis are critical stages of the problem solving process. There's three other stages of the problem solving process. Um, you're basically looking at the SBA here. All right. Um, identify the IA possible solution, select a solution, implement and review. Um, yeah, define, uh, identify possible solution, select a solution, implement and review. Or you could have test into it. Test the solution and implement and review. Um, yeah, that's four. Okay, list three tools that are used at the problem solving, at, sorry, at the problem analysis. The three tools that are used at the analysis stage as well as questionnaires, interviews, observation, and then you could give a review of that. Ta-da! Yay! This module is real cake so far, but what else? Oh, look at that. Nice little flowchart. Describe the problem that this flowchart solves. Alright, so it starts by getting, getting all these values. Total sum to a number. Total is less than 50, less than or equal to 50, then print the total on the sum. However, if it's not less than 50, it's going to check the, take the number divided by 2. If they are, if the remainder is 0, that's basically mod. If it's a even number, we add up, we keep a count of, you know, if it's an even number, we carry the number by 1. It's not an even number, if it is an odd number. Divided by five. Okay, so if it's a multiple of two, add it up. If it's a multiple of five, it's not a multiple of five. So it's the multiples of two and not five. If I'm the sum of all of two. No. If it's a multiple of two, they carry every number by one. If it's a multiple of two and five, they carry up the um, total by one and they carry the sum. So it's the sum of all the multiples of two and five below fifty. Yeah. So it finds the sum, the sum of all the multiples of two. And five and five between zero and fifty inclusive. Yeah, because so, total starts at zero, so that means it's zero to fifty inclusive plus less than equal. So the sum of all the multiples of two and five between zero and fifty. Those pressure. You didn't write that, you didn't figure it out. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, to put it in words, to put it in words. Yeah, that'll be that'll be ticklish. One 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 sentence is usually good enough. Once you can get into one sentence, you win. Write this pseudo code, oh lord. I really hope they were to write out all that. Right, um, D O T is equal to zero. O sum is equal to zero, and now is equal to one. Um, while total is less than or equal to fifty. U if um not U is equal to zero, then if not mod five, mod five equal to zero, then um, less than yeah. If not mod five is equal to zero, then you would do a uh, total is equal to total plus one, and then the one is equal to sum plus one, L num is equal to num plus one, and then you have the L, so this one, 
else is now the number last one. Yeah, but you have to you have to represent both of them. Well, this year is an else and this year is an else. So you have to have both of them in hand. Then one eighty now is equal to number plus one. Oh, that's not the year. End this up here. And end life here. And then once that is done, you will end the while. Yeah, end while. And once the while loop is ended, you do the print it all on sun. Then drop your gear down on the bottom now so you can see it. And one fluid motion. Alright, so basically what you're doing is you are saying you are saying start. Set all the variables to zero. Once you set all of them to zero, you're going to now say while total is less than equal to 15. If number two is um is equal to zero, and then you do a next if now to see if it's mod five, then you carry up the total by one. Else if it didn't meet the mod 5 requirement, you carry up number by 1 and the else here would be if the mod 2 never happened then you'll just jump down to this one one time and you'll avoid all that and then you end while and then, and then you print the stuff yep, kick the death granted that they gave you the whole flow chart just to follow the algorithm not everything but even if you struggle with algorithm uh, right now part D a student was required to write an algorithm to sum all even numbers not exceeding 10 and all odd numbers not exceeding 10 the student produced the following algorithm Okay, thank you very much, student. We do appreciate your hard work. Write the values of each of the following variables after executing the algorithm. Alright, so some even. What is some even? Some even is this. Let's see if we can trace through what we're doing here. We start off with numbers 2, some even is 0, others 0. Right? So while number is less than 11, number will stay by less than 11. If num divided by 2, what is this? If num divided by 2 is what equal to something? I don't know. If num divided by 2 equals 0, that's what, that's what it's supposed to be. I would assume. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. I didn't read that part there. I have to identify the error. Okay, so, so what we're doing right now is writing out the values that will happen with, the, with, with it being wrong. Okay, after we execute this algorithm, some even will have nothing in it. And some odd will have nothing in it because the if condition would never um the if condition will never happen because this here is a problem. I don't know if they uh, if they will be smart enough to accept that or you have to assume you have to fix it in advance and then look it out, which will be kinda weird. So I don't agree with them having to fix it in advance. But some even will be zero and some other will be zero, technically speaking, because this whole program wouldn't even run because the if num is less um divided by two. That's not a that's not a syntax. I'll put it as zero. But I think I think that they would be crazy enough to assume that you would work it out properly so we are we'll get some all even numbers from 2 to 11 which will be by 2 to 10 2 plus 4 is 6 6 plus 6 is 12 and 12 plus 8 is 20 plus numbers being added by 2 yeah, I mean, um, I'll put it as zero. I'll put it as zero. There's no way that they could act it or work out an algorithm that's not making any sense. It had to be a trick question, I don't want it to be zero. Identify the lines that contain an error. Well, line six. Oh, it's just, the only other thing just say line six. Oh, okay. And line ten. Num is equal to num plus two. Yeah, line ten will be error. Right. That's supposed to be num is equal to num plus one. And it's supposed to be not exceeding ten. All even numbers not exceeding ten. And all numbers not exceeding ten. So line two is an error too. Because line two is supposed to start no matter um, zero. Because then we will leave out one now. Yeah, our one is our number. Okay, rewrite the lines so that the algorithm executes correctly. Alright, num had to be equal to one. Um, it's supposed to be if num divided by two is equal to zero. If num divided by two is equal to zero. And then there is the next one. Num is equal to num plus one. Yeah. Alright, so the only problem here is I can't, I can't agree with this because I can't give an actual number because the algorithm is wrong.